Hi everyone, my name is Hardik and I welcome you all to RSA Dark Cards Village 2022. In this talk, we are going to see how can we first software using EFL. So before we start, I don't have any PowerPoint slides, but instead I have created a Google Code Labs uh, uh, tutorial kind of thing, which you can access by going to a website that is called fuzzing.in. When you open this website, you will see that there is one workshop or training title fuzzing with EFL RSA Dark Arts Village 2022. So you need to click on the start and when you click on the start you will see something like this so you can actually follow along our training duration is somewhere around 48 minutes and uh, uh, we'll be mostly focusing on fuzzing software on linux so uh, let's start so this talk is aimed at providing hands-on details on how to fuzz various open source softwares using AFL on Linux based system. And in this talk, we'll be covering how does a coverage guided fuzzer works, how to install AFL on a Linux based system. Then we will see how can we fuzz a simple C program using AFL. And then we will see how can we fuzz a very popular open source software called TCP dump using AFL. And then we will uh, discuss reporting crashes or bug bounties in short, and then we'll move to the conclusion. So uh, this talk is a very trimmed down version of my talk at Texas Cyber Summit 2021. So uh, uh, what you will need uh, to attend this talk. So you will be needing a laptop or desktop with 8 GB RAM and 40 GB storage. We'll be uh, using a, a VM which I have created. You can download it. And uh, you also need VMware or VirtualBox installed. You will need internet connection and willing lectures none. So uh, you can download a training VM by clicking on this URL. You can uh, simply click over that. And uh, the zip file password is infected and username and password to log into the VM is Kali Kali and we don't immediately need to use the vm so you can start the download and we can move forward with that so let's move to the next topic uh, here is about me so i currently work as a principal threat researcher at sophos uh, i'm based out of bangalore india and in the past i worked with mcafee for around 10 years uh, i was based again out of bangalore india and even before that i worked with semantic i uh, used to uh, work with their ips response team and i was based out of pune and uh, again in india so what i do on a day-to-day -day basis i basically analyze different vulnerabilities uh, exploits malware etc and i also do fuzzing and bug hunting so as of now i have around 30 plus cvs in my name i have reported uh, vulnerabilities to various open source as well as closed source software including microsoft windows uh, gdi liptif tcb dump chat database engine etc i was also msrc 2018-19 most valuable researcher and i was also msrc uh, q1 2022 top contributing researcher uh, you can read my official blogs over here uh, the url has been given uh, here these blogs are from sophos my employer and uh, before that if you want to know uh, uh, or read about my uh, previous work, you can read my McAfee blogs over here. You can also follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is hardex05. So let's move on. So before we start with fuzzing, it's needed to understand what what, what is the basic concept related to fuzzing, how does fuzzing work, what is a fuzzer, what it does. So in this portion, we'll be quickly covering uh, fuzzing theories, various fuzzing related concepts, and then we'll move to the uh, hands on so to start with uh, if you need to find a vulnerability or if you want to find a bug in a software then if you try to do it manually i mean you need to do a manual code audit now that code can be of th thousands or millions of lines of code and if you are working alone or if you are like working with a team then it is very uh, uh, like time consuming thing you need to go through each line of code you need to focus on specific function etc so it's actually very slow it takes a lot of time and also it is not possible to cover all the code paths right because if there are like millions of lines of code you simply cannot cover each and every uh, line of code also if the code base is very large then it is not possible for a single person to do all the audit himself he might need some help from various people and 
as you might notice that it is not very productive uh, people need to go through the code and uh, uh, just to find vulnerability or just to find issues and it's not very uh, helpful kind of thing and uh, you can easily miss various things related to that and also you cannot cover all the scenarios so in some way if we can automate this bug hunting approach then uh, that can be very fast uh, if we can automate that uh, you don't need to do any manual code audit and uh, you can cover most of the code parts uh, you don't need to worry about size of the code whether it's like 10 lines of code or whether it's uh, millions of lines of code so it can be automated and you don't need to worry about that also it can be done by an individual so uh, it can be further automated to notify about crashes or hangs so overall it will save a lot of time it will save a lot of efforts and so that is why we use a technique called fuzzing and in case of fuzzing uh, basically what fuzzing is that uh, it is a process of automated bug finding and uh, for that we use a software called fuzzer what a fuzzer will do is that it will generate various uh, random inputs a crafted inputs based on certain uh, scenarios and it will feed this inputs to the program and it will monitor its behavior now if your program crashes then it will save this particular test case in the crashes folder if it hangs it will save it in the hangs folder or uh, in case of coverage guided fuzzer if it results in a new code path it will probably add this to the queue so that it can further mutate that uh, input and it can uh, find new crashes or new code path or new hangs so as you can see in this uh, image over here uh, there is an application which we want to first it, this is the application where we want to find some kind of vulnerability and if we give this application one input that is input one then what happens it will take code path one then it will take code path uh, it will continue on this code path and it will give us output one now if we modify this input one which is our original input uh, we change few bits or few bytes in that file and if we feed that to the application then what will happen is that it will take code path one then suddenly it will take code path two it will continue on this code path two and suddenly it crashes so this is what the fuzzer does it basically tries to generate input which results in new code paths and which actually uh, like results in uh, new crashes because it will take an un uncertain or unexpected code paths now in case of coverage guided fuzzer how does it work is that they actually monitor the program execution at uh, 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 they basically use uh, compile time instrumentation and they can generate new input based on the pass taken so uh, what they will do is that they will mutate the file and they will check for new code parts uh, or new uh, like uh, crash or new hangs if it finds a new code path it will add it to the queue so that it can mutate it further it will change few more bits and bytes so that uh, it might trigger new code paths again uh, if it crashes then it will save the input to the crashes folder this is what we want right this is where vulnerability is so as you can see it over here it, a coverage guided fuzzer will have initial set of these cases it will uh, generate input for this seed file or queue files and it will run instrumented target uh, program with uh, our generated input and then it will check whether it's crashing or any new code path so it will save the crash it will queue the input as we discuss over here so there are uh, various coverage guided fuzzers uh, which are available today and uh, the most popular is EFL that is called American Fuzzy Lob. There is Hong Fuzz and there's Leaf Fuzzer etc as well on Windows we have WinAFL uh, etc. So these fuzzers are uh, very useful they are very successful in finding uh, bugs or vulnerabilities and uh, there is a one very interesting case study uh, which has been done by author of EFL himself and uh, if you want to read more about that you can actually go to this url that is uh, mentioned over here and just to explain this in short is uh, that what he did is that he tried to first a gpg software that is called djpeg and uh, uh, he did not had a uh, gpg file as an initial seed corpus but what he did is that he simply created one text file which has uh, hello uh, string written in that and then he ran AFL fuzzer with uh, this provided uh, input which had only hello and uh, after a few hours what he found is that the fuzzer automatically tried uh, the fuzzer automatically generated valid jpeg files so if you are comfortable with jpeg file you will notice that it follows a specific structure there is a header and uh, it has various fields so this fuzzer uh, 
started generating valid JPEG file. So that shows the beauty of coverage guided fuzzing, where it can trace the program path and it can check if okay, there is some uh, comparison is over, uh, required. Or without that, the program will not go to the new code path. So it will modify that and it will generate valid uh, JPEG file. This is something you cannot expect from a uh, dumb fuzzer, where it will simply generate random inputs and it will feed it to this uh, program because this program will discard any randomly generated input. It needs to be a proper JPEG file. So that is the beauty of coverage guided fuzzing. Now there are certain terminology in case of coverage guided fuzzing that is uh, basic blocks, instrumentation and code coverage. So we'll go through them one by one. First thing we are going to cover is basic blocks. So a basic block is nothing but it's a consecutive lines of code with no branches. So uh, in simple terms, if you look at the code, like over here, you will notice that uh, there are some conditions like there is a if condition and there is a else condition over here. So the con consecutive lines of code before taking a new path. So you can see that here, this is consecutive lines of code and then there is a comparison over here. Now, if this condition is satisfied, then controls comes over here. But if this condition is not satisfied, then controls comes over here. So this will be one uh, basic block. Then inside this condition, there are few consecutive lines of code. I um, mean, once you start executing that, you will go to the next line, then you will go to the next line. So this will be the second consecutive block. And then this will be the third basic block over here. So this small code has three basic block, one, two, and three over here. So, and each basic block will have one entry point and one exit point. So in this case, this will be the entry point and exit point will be somewhere around here. So this will be the exit point. This is where control goes to the another basic blocks. And if you use IDE Pro Dissembler to check any compiled binary, any EXE on Windows or on the Linux based system, you will see that IDA always displays something like this, like there is a block, uh, then there is a condition. So uh, if, we, uh, if we like disassemble this code using IDA, then this will be first basic block. You can see that it's moving 0, 1, 2, X, Y, Z over here, as we have seen over here. Then there is a condition, uh, true or false. So these are the condition, and then in the end, it is printing the value. So this is how it looks like when you disassemble the code. Now, the second point over here is of code coverage. So the code coverage, if you are from a development background, you already know what is a code coverage, but uh, in case you are not aware, code coverage is basically the measure of code, which is covered by an input uh, by program. So the more lines of code your input will cover, there are higher chances that uh, you will find a bug. And if uh, uh, your input doesn't cover much code pass, then there are like chances that you will not find any bug or any vulnerability over here. Now, if we take a very simple C program, this is the program which we are going to use uh, next. We'll be fuzzing this with the EFL. So you will notice that it has a simple image structure. Then there is a function called process image, which basically takes one file name. It uh, opens this file and uh, then it will like perform uh, some operations like addition, subsection, malloc, etc. So the lines which you are seeing in blue, this is the lines which are covered by input and the lines which are in red are the lines which are not covered by the input so you will see that if we give us an input which covers all these lines then there are chances that we'll find some bugs over here but if we give an input which basically say exits over here if it doesn't enter inside while loop then we won't find any bug so the more code coverage the higher the code coverage percentage the higher the chances of bugs over here so that is what we mean by code coverage. And a coverage guided fuzzer always uh, aims for getting higher code coverage uh, by their input. Moving on to next topic, that is instrumentation. Now, uh, if someone asks you to trace out that at a particular point uh, during the execution where the control is, so uh, how you will figure that out. So for that, what coverage guided fuzzer does is that they use something called compile time instrumentation and in that what it does is that it adds some instrumentation code at the compile time so you basically need the source code and since we are talking about linux most of the libraries or software on linux are open source so we 
can easily get the source code and for that we can use compile time instrumentation so if we first any software using afl it is mandatory that we compile those software using afl provided wrapper uh, so basically afl provides certain wrappers like afl gcc or afl g plus plus and uh, if we want to first them then uh, we need to compile our program with afl gcc or afl g plus plus depending on the code whether it is c or c plus plus so when you compile and when you disassemble that code you will see that for each and every basic block afl will add one function that is afl may be lock you as you can see it over here uh, there is one function in this basic block there is uh, same function again in this basic block so this is actually a callback function and what it does is that as your program gets uh, gets executed this function will get called and there is a unique block id over here like you can see this rcx 3ab1 so this is a unique block id for this program uh, this basic blocks and then uh, 2831 this is the unique id for this basic block so this will basically give us uh, the fuzzer an idea that which basic blocks is being executed and your fuzzer can trace the execution that whether control is going from here to here and here or here so that is how the coverage credit fuzzer traces the program execution and in case the source code is not available then we need to use runtime instrumentation uh, uh, this is basically used in windows uh, based uh, fuzzing so for that they use certain uh, instrumentation framework like dynamo rio or uh, intel paint tool but since we are mostly focusing on linux we are not going to cover that in detail over here so we can skip that and now moving on so what is afl so the full form of afl as i already mentioned is called american fuzzy low and it has been created by michael zelwaski who used to work with google project zero and this is a fuzzer with instrumentation guided genetic algorithm where we just discuss what a binary instrumentation is and it comes with a set of various utilities like afl fuzz afl c min afl team in afl show map afl gcc afl g plus plus etc and what this fuzzer does so fuzzer doesn't do any magic thing what a coverage credit fuzzer does is that you have to give them a set of input and they will take one input from that they will change certain bits and bytes or uh, they will perform some random arithmetic operation on that and they will create a new input and they will feed it to the program and then they will monitor for any crash or new code paths so there are various uh, uh, strategies which uh, AFL uses like bit flip by flip havoc splice etc and uh, in case of bit flip what it will do is that basically it flips a bit so if you give some input it will open that file it will take a bit and it will flip so if that bit is one it will change it to zero if that bit is zero it will change it to one so this can also be done in a steps of like say you will change uh, one bit then you will leave the next bit then again you will change one bit you will do the next bit so it is like called one by one or you will like change two bits you will skip one bit you will change two bits you will skip one bit so vice versa uh, like that you can change random bits uh, in a file and you can feed that input to your program uh, similarly there is a strategy called byte flip in byte flip what uh, it will do is that it will uh, flips it will flip the byte so it can be also done in shape like you will change one byte then you will leave the next byte you will again change one byte you will leave next byte or you will change two byte you will leave one byte you will again change two bytes and change one byte so vice versa then there is this fudging strategy called arithmetic so in this it will do random arithmetic operation like it will add, it, add something or it will like uh, subtract something uh, using random values in your input file then there is something called havoc strategy so in havoc strategy it will use any random strategy like bit flip byte flip uh, uh, splice addition subtraction it will it will use any of the random strategy uh, for that then there is a, another strategy uh, uh, which is called dictionary so in that uh, what you can do is that if you know the file format you can generate some dictionary tokens you can feed it to afl and afl will use those tokens to generate a new file so this strategy is also very helpful and afl also has capability to figure out and generate some uh, tokens for uh, for the file formats so that is called auto-generated dictionary uh, then there is a strategy called interest so in that 
case uh, afl will uh, open the file the input file it will replace it with some interesting values like uh, 0ff or 07f etc and this can also be done when like it will change eight bytes it will uh, leave next eight bytes and uh, all these things and then the last surgery is splice in splice what afl will do is that it will split and combine two or more input file to generate a new file so it will generate third file by by combining uh, one or more files so if you want to know more about that i have given a reference link over here you can simply uh, click on this link and you can read more details about that but since we have very limited time i will not be going in much details on that and uh, now as you can see there are different steps there are various steps involved in fuzzing like you will select one target then you will collect some corpus so it is always a good idea and it is a recommended way that before you start uh, fuzzing uh, you start your fuzzing campaign uh, you should have a very uh, good corpus collection Cor uh, corpus is nothing but the uh, collection of input file which can provide maximum code coverage and then you will minimize the corpus so uh, because uh, it may be possible that uh, may, like more than one file triggers the same code path so that will be a waste of time so you need to remove those file that is called corpus minimization and then you will run your fuzzer you will fuzz the software then uh, you will get some crash so you need to try the crash so if you say like you get 10 crashes then you want to figure out uh, all are all these crashes are at the same location or they are different location because that denotes the same bug or that it was the different bugs then you will do test case minimization so say you got a uh, you got a creation and uh, that input file is very large so not necessarily every uh, bit or byte is required in that test file so you can probably remove some of this uh, bits and bytes from the file so that is called test case minimization and then uh, the last step is root cause analysis so you basically want to know like what what is the field what is the value which is causing the crash and that's where you get the value so that is uh, like when you debug the program that is called root cause analysis so uh, the corpus collection steps uh, as i already mentioned a good file corpus will help to discover code paths in short amount of time uh, if, as we discussed before uh, like there is was an interesting case study where the efl was generated a jpeg file so if you don't give if you give a simple hello uh, text to your first program that can uh, generate valid file but it will take few hours it may take few days that will uh, so that will take a lot of time but if you provide your first uh, a uh, like decent collection of all the input files then uh, it will very quickly uh, discover new code paths so it is already recommended that you uh, have a very good corpus at the start then uh, how to get the corpus so what you can do is that there are various open source software and if you are fuzzing them then you will notice that they have regression test cases basically there is a folder called or, or directory called test cases you can certainly look into that you can also like do google search you can also search them on github so that in that way you can get a lot of uh, test case file and then there is something called corpus minimization so suppose you collected like thousands of files now uh, it may be possible that not all the file will trigger the same code path and uh, uh, there are certain files which will always trigger the same code path so you need to remove the files which triggers the same code path because that is a duplication right so you want to avoid that so afl provides one utility called afl cmin which you can generate uh, which you can use to remove duplicate files from uh, uh, your corpus and you can use this command line that is afl dash cmin dash i that is for input you need to give input for uh, directory and dash o you need to give output directory where it will uh, keep the corpus after removing all the duplicate files dash dash your uh, program executable name and direct at the rate so this at the rate at the rate means that the input is taken from the file we will discuss this more later now after corpus collection you will first the program that will result in crash or hang and then you will do crash tries and test case minimization and then you will do root cause analysis so once we find a crash or once we find various crashes by running fuzzer what we need to do is that which field we need to figure out which field in the file is causing the, the crash then which uh, value what is the value for that field which is causing the crash and which condition in the program is causing the crash so that condition in program you can call it as a vulnerability so uh, let's move on in case you have any question feel free to ask me on discord channel i will be available to answer all the questions 
now let us move to hands-on uh, first we will see how to compile and install efl and uh, uh, then we will see various sanitizer and then we will first a very simple c program so i have mentioned all the instructions over here first thing we need to do is that we need to jet clone afl on our system we will use this command that is jet clone and this url and then we will go to this directory we simply need to run make and then we will go to uh, another directory that is llvm mode we will run make and then we will do make install so uh, this will install various compiler wrapper and utilities like AFL GCC, AFL uh, Clang, AFL Clang Fast, etc. And this will be used to instrument and compile C code. Then there are another set of utility AFL G, AFL Clang, AFL Clang uh, Fast. So this will be used to instrument and compile C code. This is for C code, this is for C code. Then there is something called AFL Got CPU. So this is a utility which will uh, show available CPU cores on the system. We use it when we want to uh, run AFL in multi mode. So uh, then there is a AFL C main as we discussed, it is used to minimize the corpus file, reduces number of files. There is AFL show map, uh, it will show the coverage map. We are not going to use it. And there is AFL T main, which is a utility to trim a single disk file. It will basically remove all the unnecessary bits and bytes which are not needed to replicate the crash. So there are certain things you need to be aware. AFL C main needs to be used before you start your fuzzing campaign. It will basically reduce the corpus files. While AFL T main you need to use after you found a crash to minimize the disk size. So it works with collection of file. AFL C main works with collection of file. AFL T main will work with single file. Also there is something called LLVM mode. So this will give us AFL C link fast and AFL C link fast plus plus and these are required to uh, use uh, the afl persistent mode but this is something we are not going to discuss it right now and to install uh, and to use if you want to use afl persistent mode then you need to install clang and llvm which you can install by typing this command that is sudo apt install clang llvm so now i'm going to open my uh, vm and we will see how can we install efl on the system so you need to go to the directory uh, that is desktop uh, slash fuzzing workshop and this directory has all the stuff which we need for this training or for this talk so if you see the directory listing uh, you can see i have already uh, copied efl over here but in case you want to uh, do it at your own you need to jet clone that so what you can do is that simply do jet clone and the url which is mentioned over here that is this thing so let me do it now and You can see that it's giving me an error that is uh, AFL already exists. So this is because I already uh, have AFL on my system. In your case, uh, you don't have AFL. Simply run this command and then we will do CD AFL. So if you go inside AFL uh, directory, you will see that it contains a lot of C files. So I will do a make clean first, which will remove all the compiled binary. So you will see that it has uh, various uh, C file that is AFL analyze, AFL C main, uh, AFL T main, AFL uh, WhatsApp, etc. And then there is one folder called LLVM mode. So if we go back to our uh, code labs, you will see that we need to run a command that is make, and then we will go to LLVM mode directly, and we will again run make. So let's do that. First, we will run make command. It will compile all the files as you can see it over here it is compiled and now we will go to llvm mode and we will again type make so just remember that if you want to use llvm mode you need to install dependencies which are mentioned over here that is clang and llvm without that this command will not work so let's again do a make over here so we have uh, compiled AFL on our system and you can see that we can use AFL clang fast over here. And then we will go back to our parent directory that is AFL. 
and then we can type make install so what it will do is that it will install afl on our system and then we can run any of the utility like afl fuzz or afl uh, cmin etc directly from any directory so that is how we install afl on our system and before we move to the next topic uh, let me open code labs again so there is one small part i wanted to mention that is called sanitizers if you are uh, doing development uh, programming on the linux base platform then you might be aware of uh, what sanitizers are but in case you are seeing it for the first time i will quickly cover uh, all the sanitizers so basically sanitizers are compiled time uh, utilities which helps to find uh, bug at the early stage of program execution and they uses various tactics to monitor memory or uh, uh, the executed code so that they can identify various issues we will not be going into much detail for that but just to cover uh, there are different sanitizers like sn that is called uh, address sanitizer and you can enable address sanitizer by giving this argument to your gcc uh, compiler that is uh, dash f sanitize is equal to address uh, then there is memory sanitizer so you can enable that by giving this argument that is dash f sanitize is equal to memory there is a undefined behavior sanitizer in short we call it as ubsan and you can enable that by giving this argument that is f sanitize is equal to undefined and there is uh, another uh, sanitizer that is called threat sanitizer or in short we call it as a t set so you can enable threat sanitizer by using this command or argument that is uh, dash f sanitizer is equal to thread to your gcc uh, compiler and one thing to notice over here is that address sanitizer and memory sanitizer are mutually exclusive and what does it means is that you cannot use asyn and msyn together you either use asyn or you either use msyn but you can combine ubsyn with uh, or uh, tsyn with any of this all these sanitizers are, uh, are very helpful to discover various uh, bugs or vulnerabilities like use after free, heap buffer overflows, uh, stack buffer overflows, uh, initialize and order bug, memory leaks, use after scope, uh, null pointer dereference, sign integer overflows, typecast overflows, uh, divide by zero, etc. So also one thing to note over here is that EFL has various environment variables. So like I mentioned that you need to give uh, various compiler flags uh, while compiling so if you don't want to use this compiler flags you can simply use environment variable with efl so you need to set this uh, variable like efl use esn is equal to one and that will compile your binary with address sanitizer if you are using efl gcc or efl g plus plus or efl clang uh, efl clang plus plus you can uh, easily set this environment variable and uh, that will avoid using this uh, 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 parameters so now uh, if you want to know more about this parameter you can open this url you can open this link and you can read about them also there are certain references which i have given about each uh, of this sanitizer which uh, you can go through when you have time uh, so you can go ahead and read that but uh, these are enough for this uh, talk and we will not be going uh, into further details for that so let's move to the next topic and that is uh, a hands-on topic that is how can we first a simple c program with efl so what i have done is that i have created a very simple c program just to explain the concepts of uh, fuzzing and uh, different vulnerabilities and the goal of this uh, hands-on exercise is to learn how to fuzz a program with efl so check clone that actually so Uh, you can see that on my system I already have uh, this so let me go inside that and uh, there is a program called img read.c this is the damn vulnerable c program which we will be fuzzing and you will notice that it has a main function which expects two standard parameter that is argc argv and then it calls a function that is called process image with argv uh, one so that that is the first parameter which is passed to this program and this function that is process image what it will do is that it basically takes the file name as parameter it will open that file and it will try to read in this structure that is structure img so this structure is uh, structure image and it is declared over here so this structure has various uh, uh, variable like header which is of four bytes there is width there is height and there is data 
now what this function will do after reading the data from file it will basically perform some sanity checks then it will add width and height and it will allocate some memory based on that and then it will copy some data that is img data to this buffer then uh, it will perform some other operation like it will uh, try to free the buffer or uh, it will like uh, subtract image uh, height from image width it will add some uh, random like it will add 100 to that it will again allocate uh, it will again allocate some memory for that so it will then uh, try to copy some data to allocate it memory and all this kind of thing is there so basically this is a very uh, uh, a simple program it contains a lot of vulnerabilities and our goal is to first this program with afl and then we will see uh, where it is crashing so you can easily figure out uh, that uh, if the length or the size one is too small and if you copy some data uh, from the structure which is of 10 bytes like the structure is of 10 bytes over here and if width and height are like say 1 1 it will become 2 so if you copy 10 bytes of data to a 2 bytes buffer it will lead to an overflow so this is something we are going to see so that will be a heap buffer overflow and similarly there are a lot of integer overflow like say if uh, uh, width is a f f f f f f f f f and if you add one to that width will become zero and uh, uh, like that so now let us go ahead and uh, compile this program and then we will fuzz it so you can actually go back to our uh, uh, code labs and uh, JIT clone we have already done and now to compile this we will use this command that is afl gcc and then we will use address integer so as i mentioned we can also use an environment variable that is afl use ksin uh, if we don't want to use this and then we will compile a debug build so that is ggdb dash o0 we don't want any optimization this is because uh, if in case we want to do some root cause analysis uh, uh, we can have uh, the detail over there then our source file that is imgread.c the c file and dash o that is uh, what is the output file name so that is the uh, img read underscore efl so now let us go ahead and uh, run this and then we'll see what happens so i will simply copy this command and you will see that you will uh, get a message something like this afl gcc uh, then uh, there is instrumented at 134 location and now we get one binary that is img read underscore afl right so you will notice that it expect one file name as parameter and in case we want to verify that uh, it is instrumented or not what we can do is that we can use a command that is nm dash na if uh, img read underscore afl so we can grab for afl actually over here so you will notice that it has afl maybe log function uh, then it has afl store written uh, all the afl related function it means that our binary is instrumented so we can actually easily fuzz this and before we start fuzzing we need some seed corpus so what we will do is that we will basically create one directory that is uh, uh, let's call it in and inside that we will create one simple uh, file which contains img tag so and then we will run afl first command so i will come back to afl first command let us create this directory make directory in that directory is already there so let's do echo img in one dot img and uh, let's see if uh, Okay, this file is created. So now we will run our fuzzer and that command is uh, this. So we will use a binary that is afl dash fuzz. This is the binary, this is the fuzzer which will generate the input. It will feed this to our program over here. And the command is afl first dash ii means input directory which has our seed corpus dash o uh, where it saves all the crashes and hangs, etc dash m is equal to none so whenever we compile a 64 bit binary we need to use this option if you are using 32 bit binary you can ignore this so that is uh, memory is none and dash dash so remember to use dash dash what it means is that after this the 
parameter will be passed to the binary over here. So our binary name is img read underscore afl and add the rate, add the rate. So this add the rate, add the rate, what afl will do is that at the runtime, it will replace this add the rate, add the rate with the file name. So let us copy this command and paste it over here and we will run it. So you can see that uh, it has started fuzzing our program and you will also notice that there are various statistics it display over here. So runtime means uh, since how long we have been running our program, then last new find it means that uh, when was the last time it found a new code path, last saved crash. So when was the last uh, crash was found? and the last saved hang when was the last hang was found all these uh, uh, are uh, useful while uh, you are fuzzing your program cycles does it means that what it will do is that it will take all the input from the uh, input directly it will go through them so if it finishes it will again uh, go back and it will uh, try some different strategies so this is it means that it for the four times it has went through all the input in the input uh, directory corpus count how much is the total file in the corpus so right now it is seven saved crashes saved hang so if it finds any crash or hang it will save it over here then uh, you can see that there is a stage progress so as we discussed there are various fuzzing uh, strategies like splice or havoc or uh, bit flip byte flip so right now it is using like uh, splice havoc etc uh, this is execution and uh, our total execution so far is like 34,000 35,000 and what is the execution speed so execution speed is somewhere around 425 420 execution per second it means that it is processing around 420 test cases per second you will notice that we just found one crash uh, so the total crashes are one it is mentioned over here that saved crashes are one and uh, then uh, uh, fuzzing strategy yield this is something you can uh, ignore as of now uh, we don't need to discuss it right now so we can skip that and now to cancel this uh, you can press ctrl c so it will cancel this and one more thing the ui i have used is afl plus plus which is you can see a port of a vanilla afl so there might be some difference with, uh, with this uh, ui and what you see it on the uh, google uh, code labs over here so this is how you fuzz a program using afl now if you want to see what does out directory contains then you can go to out directory and inside that you will notice that it actually has various files so uh, files and directories so if you go to the crashes folder right you will see that uh, it contains all the crashes and uh, the file name will be something like this id 00 uh, uh, so which is the signal which is 06 uh, source file uh, which it mutated and uh, all these things will be there and uh, uh, then if you go to hangs folder then it contains all the hangs in our case there is no hangs then if you go to the queue directory then it will have all the uh, input files which generate a new code path so you can have a uh, look at that and now let us see one of them let's say we check the first one so you will see that it has changed uh, img to xxx and uh, if we check second file you will see it is uh, the same as first one if we check the third file It has xxxx then there is eight and all the things right so uh, these are all the mutated file we started with img then it changed to xxx xxx uh, and all, all these different files are there this is how the fuzzer mutates the file and uh, if you go to crashes folder you will notice that there is one readme.txt file so what happens is that when you run the fuzzer it will uh, save the command line to this file so that you know what command line you have given like in various software uh, you need to use uh, various parameters so sometimes you forget which parameter uh, which uh, parameter you have used so you in that case you can open this file and you can notice the exact parameter which has been passed uh, to the program so this is very useful you can check that and uh, this is what the structure of the output directory and uh, with that let's move to the next part now after we have run this fuzzer we will 
find some crashes and now we will see how can we replicate the crash so to replicate the crash we will again use our compiled binary that is imd read underscore efn and then we will give our crashing file name as input to this uh, binary and we will see if the crash is being replicated or not so our crashing file is inside crashes folder and it has named something like id 00006 something like this so let us uh, use our compile binary and give this file as uh, give this file as input and let's see what happens so you will notice that our binary is still crashing with the provided input and it is the address sanitizer which is uh, causing the crash and it is actually a stack buffer overflow uh, which is at the line 48 in img read.c so if we open img read.c file over here and if we go to line 48 we can see that there is a printf call which is uh, printing the value of img dot header uh, width uh, height and data so the chances are that that it is trying to access some uh, memory uh, over here and which is causing the crash over here so we will not be debugging this crash because we don't have much time but this is just to show how can we replicate the crash which we get from the fuzzer now let us move to the next topic and now let us go ahead and uh, see how can we fuzz a uh, open source software that is called tcp dump using uh, afl so let's go and to first tcp dump what we need to do is that first thing is we need to get the source code of uh, two software that is tcp dump and leap pcap we need leap pcap this is because tcp dump uses leap pcap so let us run this command first we will clone tcp dump and then we will clone leap pcap so i will do tcp dump okay it's already exist at my system now let us clone lip pcap so we will actually go to tcp dump and then we will clone lip pcap inside that directory so that we don't get any dependencies issues okay it is already exist on my system but in your case if you don't have uh, it will clone it on your system and now we need to compile it using efl so for that we will keep it simple we will simply use efl gcc and then we will use cflex uh, we will use f sanitize address uh, and uh, then we will run configures so let us con copy this command uh, we will go to lip pcap uh, directory and then we will copy this command So you will notice that CC means compiler, which we want to use. In this case, we are using AFL dash GCC. Uh, then Cflex, that is uh, dash G, F sanitizer is equal to address. We are using uh, address sanitizer, F norm at frame pointer. It is useful uh, in case we are using sanitizer. Then uh, linker flag, uh, that is the same as what we have given over here. And then we will run dot slash configure. So let's run it and see what happens. So it will create a config file and now we will simply type make over here so you will see that it is uh, instrumenting our binary and then we can do a sudo make install so that will actually install this uh, uh, lip pickup on the system since i already have installed i am canceling this but in your case you need to press enter and after this we will go to tcp dump directory and then we will run the same command again so you can simply run the same command that is cc is equal to efl dash gcc c flex uh, ld flex and boss slash configure and you can then run make and make install so if you run make you will see that uh, uh, 
let me do a make clean so when you run make you will see that it started instrumenting the various files and uh, you will see this message instrumented at uh, xyz location all the sync it will take few seconds or maybe a minute or so depending on your system so we need to wait so you can see that it uh, has compiled our file and now we need to do make install so on my system i have already done that but in your case you need to press enter after that i am cancelling it right now and what it will do is that it will install tcp dump on your system if you don't want to install that is also fine because you will actually get the tcp dump uh, binary on the current uh, uh, directory that is tcp dump that's uh, where you run the make command so you can actually run that and uh, now we need to fuzz that so before uh, starting our fuzzing campaign we need some corpus so uh, where to get corpus and one more thing if in case your compilation fails because of some missing dependencies then you need to install two dependencies that is flex and bison so you can run this uh, command that is sudo apt install flex uh, and bison so that will install all the missing dependencies and uh, uh, to get the test corpus what we can do is that we need to check the test folder over here so let us go ahead and see what the test folder contains over here so you will notice that it has a lot of pcaps right and if you see uh, the file name there is this like uh, uh, ic sec fault then there is uh, asn uh, heap overflow etc out of boundary and uh, 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 etc are there so it means that it can act as a very good taste corpus or initial seed corpus for our fuzzing campaign and uh, only issue is that since we we are not sure if there is any file which triggers the same code path we want to remove the duplicates so for that we are going to use eflc min we will run it to this corpus and we will see how many unique files we get over here so let us uh, see the command for that and you will see that the command is mentioned over here that is aflc min dash i taste dash o main corpus uh, dash m none dash dash tcp dump and as you know tcp dump has various options like dash vv dash e dash nnr so we are going to use this option and these are basically for verbose mode and r is for read from the file and uh, uh, en and i mean it will display various header information and then enter it enter it so let us copy this command and run it so you can see that and there are total 1284 input files uh, which is inside taste folder and now when we run aflc cmin on that uh, you will see that it has narrowed it down to 421 files so basically out of uh, 1284 files there are only 421 files which triggers unique code path and rest all triggers duplicate code path so we can remove uh, rest of the files and we can use this 421 unique files uh, so that uh, we avoid any duplication while uh, running our fuzzing campaign now uh, since we have minimized our corpus we need to run our fuzzer so we will need this command that is efl dash fuzz dash i that is our uh, input uh, corpus uh, the directory which contains our input corpus dash o that contains uh, all the crashes or our uh, fuzzing output dash m is equal to none in case we are using 64 bit build if it is 32 bit build we will uh, uh, we can skip this and dash dash dot slash tcp dump dash vv dash e dash nnr at the rate at the rate so this will first tcp dump let us go ahead and see So you can see that uh, it is going through each and every file inside our uh, uh, corpus. And you will see that it started fuzzing our uh, uh, TCP dump binary it is uh, discovering new code paths as you can see we initially had only 421 or something uh, seed file and out of that it started uh, like discovering new code paths so the current corpus size is like 480 uh, plus uh, files 
and the speed we are getting is 230 executions per second which means it is processing somewhere around 230 uh, inputs per second over here and uh, the current strategy is havoc so this is how you can first tcp dump it. and i'm going to cancel it so to cancel it we can use control c so this is how you first open source software using afl now let's move to uh, the next part and that is reporting bugs so if you first any open source software and if you find any crashes then it is always a good practice that you report it to vendor first and generally uh, most of the vendor has a email id like security at vendor.com uh, or they might have some uh, other email id so always make sure that you report uh, issues to them first so that they get enough time to fix that you can also visit their website for security contact uh, and you can follow the process as uh, uh, mentioned by them also don't disclose anything unless vendor releases the patch because uh, uh, there are malicious people you can misuse your findings so don't publicly disclose anything unless vendor releases the patch and uh, there are certain vendors who can reward you with bug bounties for your uh, work so uh, if you are lucky you might get some bug bounty you can make some money out of that uh, let's move to the next uh, and that is what's next after this talk so this talk was a very basic introduction on how to first software using afl uh, fuzzing is a very vast subject and it takes a lot of time to learn about fuzzing i hope that this talk have given you at least a basic idea of what fuzzing is and how to find vulnerabilities but if you want to dial more into fuzzing then i will recommend you to try afl plus plus which is a community driven port of uh, afl afl is not been into active maintenance now and afl plus plus is more feature and it has uh, uh, it supports multiple architecture black source fuzzing custom editor so uh, there are uh, like very good folks who support it and who maintain it actively so try that and uh, now that you know how to fuzz you can try some open source software start with very basic libraries very basic very simple softwares and once you get confidence uh, try to fuzz some complex program and you if you are interested in fuzzing on windows then you can try winafl and uh, you can check this url uh, uh, to if you are really interested in fuzzing on windows and with that uh, we are almost done with our talk so in case you have any question i can take after this and uh, just to conclude so fuzzing can help in finding different types of bugs and help to improve overall uh, so quality of the software Fuzzing can save time resource as it can be automated and fuzzing should be part of software development life cycle and uh, there are certain challenges uh, which uh, at the time you face like you will get broken and non-working stuff you face a lot of dependencies issues since it's linux it's open source uh, uh, sometimes the version mismatch will happen some function will or something got changed and you will not be able to compile that but gradually you will learn how to overcome all this uh, obstacle and uh, in the end it's worth it so uh, give it a try and uh, with that i'm open to any questions you might have uh, if you have any question feel free to post it on the discord uh, in case you want to contact me after this talk uh, you can uh, follow me on twitter that is hardik05 you can email me uh, that is hardik05 at gmail.com and i will be hosting my workshops at this site that is fuzzing.in and with that uh, we are done with this talk so i hope that you have enjoyed this workshop as much as i have enjoyed uh, creating contents and delivering it and uh, uh, enjoy rest of the uh, rsa conference uh, thank you have a nice day goodbye